Bonjour monsieur, le programme de Macron pour les élections. Merci, bonne journée. Bonjour monsieur, merci. merci. Bonjour, le programme d'Emmanuel Macron. Bonjour monsieur, le programme de Macron. It's about 8 in the morning and uh, people are emerging from the metro here at Lille Flandre station and standing at the top of the stairs, a group of young volunteers from the En Marche campaign of Emmanuel Macron handing out leaflets. They clearly believe in these last days of the campaigning, every vote counts. My name is uh, Robin Baudanguin. I'm uh, 20 years old. Today, nobody will know the result of the election, so it's why we want to fight here. What are your hopes for France if Emmanuel Macron becomes president? In Lille, we are near to Belgium more than in Marseille, for example. And it's this Europe that I want. It's the only candidate who speaks in favor of Europe, even in the world, because there is Donald Trump who was elected, there is the Brexit, and here, we have the election in France and we are just like, oh my God, what will happen if uh, it's Marine Le Pen who will be elected and we just want Emmanuel Macron to, to, to be the next president. We've come about 20 minutes or so outside the centre of Lille. We're in Roubaix on the Rue de France and it's a very different type of France here. This is. Uh, a market selling all types of textiles, brightly coloured, a bit of fruit and veg as well. And it's a very multi-ethnic and very poor area of this country as well. In fact, Roubaix is one of the poorest parts of France. Let's have a chat to the, the people in the market to see what they make of Sunday's election. Saïd. And you're from Roubaix? Yes, I'm from Roubaix. Three euros. Trois euros. And you're, for us, you're even talking to your customers in English. Yes. Uh, so, so tell us, we've got the election coming up at this weekend, the presidential election. Are there any candidates you support? No one. No one. Personally, there is no one who interests me. How do you think people here are going to vote? Here, in Roubaix. The most of people I know, really, uh, white people, FN, and not white people, not vote. So you think all the, all the white people will vote for Marine Le Pen, and all the non-white people the native, yes. won't native. vote. So how do you think France is going to look after this election? What is anything going to change? Ooh, France can change if she left Europe. She cannot change if they didn't left Europe. Here in Ruby, there is no money. You are here from 30 minutes. I am selling one euro. Bonjour, Madame. In a park not far from the market, I meet Astrid Le Pla, a nurse and local councillor from Marine Le Pen's Front National. I think Marine Le Pen will do better than people say. When we hand out leaflets in the market, we get the sense that there's a lot more than a quarter of people who are favourable towards us. The party has already made gains in areas such as this, thanks to concerns about the EU, falling living standards and immigration. As you've seen from walking around, Robert, there's lots of areas where you don't really feel like you're in France anymore. There's a feeling that ghettoisation has taken over. There's lots of people who come from abroad, and I think that makes people think. We're looking around at Roubaix's grandiose buildings. They really are a constant reminder of this town's faded industrial glory. This used to be a, a global textile hub, but uh, when the industry died out, the jobs were never really replaced. Instead, what we have is a real sense of despair that I heard voiced by this supporter of Marine Le Pen. Nous, on est français. On se sent déjà plus chez nous. On est plus en Us, the French people, we no longer feel like we're at home. We've got no security. I've waited 10 years for a new council flat, but we're still waiting. We're told other people who've just arrived need to be lodged. It used to be magnificent, Roubaix. There used to be shops everywhere. Now there's nothing. No jobs, no factories. They've all gone elsewhere. So what's happened to the party that's held power in France for the last five years and held sway in the Lille region for much longer, the Socialists? At a local party office, foot soldiers armed with brushes and buckets of glue are about to stick up posters of their presidential candidate, Benoit Hamon, who is trailing badly in the polls. The company they had paid to do the job hadn't turned up, not the best of omens ahead of Sunday's vote. I ask local leader Mehdi Masrour, why are people rejecting the party? 
Because the people feel betrayed. If you, sp you speak with them, he, they will tell you that uh, for them, uh, the Parti Socialist is not a left party. So he, we have to regain the trust with the people. We have to regain the trust. That's, that's our fight. That's our fight. Will, it be, a long, will it be a long fight? Everything moves very fast. But so you won't do it in two or three days? No, no, not in three days. No, that's, uh, for me, that's dead. The left is, is uh, sick in France. The left is sick. Oui, bonjour. On vient faire du porte-à-porte -porte pour Mélenchon. Merci. But there's one candidate on the left who seems to be in rude health. In a block of flats in a working-class area of Lille, I hook up with supporters of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, a hard-left Eurosceptic who wants to pull France out of NATO and to tax high earners 90%. Volunteers like Karine say that he is the only candidate who can bring about real change. It's going back to basics and deciding that we can change the world. So, and for me, it is what the left is about. And uh, it's the only program that really speaks about fighting poverty and making it disappear. This is the salle of but could the real prospect of a far-left versus far-right runoff drive voters into the arms of a more traditional candidate? As he showed me the chandeliers and sweeping staircases of Roubaix Town Hall, centre-right Mayor Guillaume Delba expressed the hope that his party's embattled figurehead François Fillon would benefit. He's an experienced candidate who has shown that, despite the difficulties he's had, he has kept on track. Everything is still to play for. We know the last days of the campaign will be decisive. I think it's possible that people will vote for the big parties and avoid votes being spread out, something which always benefits the extreme parties. And now the attack in Paris. It's the morning after and I'm back where we started at Lille Flandre station. Today, police officers and soldiers outnumber the leafleters. And there is a sense here that the shootings have only added to the uncertainty in an already highly unpredictable election. For undecided voters like dental surgeon Valentin, it could be a factor in how they make their choice. Maybe it will give more credency to Marine Le Pen. Do you, have you decided who you will be voting for? Not yet. I'm hesitating. Between? I don't know. François Fillon, maybe Macron, and I don't know, maybe Le Pen. I don't know yet.